Some of the most bizarre cryptid and entity encounters out there seem to occur only once. These are the cases where witnesses have come across something beyond their comprehension, yet they're never seen again to disappear back to whence they came. As these cases truly fascinate me, I figured I'd share a couple more. Our first account comes from 1978 in Toronto, Canada. Here, within the confines of the various networks of tunnels and caves under this sprawling metropolis, a 51-year-old man named only as Ernest had a strange and frightening encounter in August of that year. The witness claims that he had been out searching the neighborhood for a missing kitten from a litter he had been raising with his wife, when he had stumbled across a tunnel entrance and decided to get a flashlight and investigate where it led, maybe to even find his missing cat in the process. He claims that he had gone down about 10 feet into the murk and suddenly came across a creature that looked somewhat like a long and thin monkey, about 3 feet in height, with large teeth and covered in gray fur. The eyes which peered out of the darkness from deep sockets were described as being bright orange and slanted, and to make the whole ordeal even more horrific, Ernest reported that the creature actually spoke to him. He would say, I saw a living nightmare that I'll never forget. It said, go away, go away, in a hissing voice. Then it took off down a long tunnel off to the side. I got out of there as fast as I could. I was shaking with fear. Ernest would later tell the Toronto Sun newspaper of his frightening experience after being encouraged by a friend to do so, and he refrained from giving his last name out of fear that he'd be ridiculed. Staff from the Sun even went as far to accompany Ernest to the location of his strange sighting in March of 1979, and they found that indeed there was an entrance to a cave at the end of a passageway between houses, which led into a narrow tunnel that dropped off into the gloom sharply, and was surmised to lead to the unseen sewer system down below. When they investigated the tunnel, they didn't see any strange creature but they did find the maimed carcass of a cat half buried in the ground. When sewer officials were questioned about what Ernest had perhaps seen, an employee gave the rather ominous statement, people who work on the surface just don't know what it's like down there. It's a whole different world. Who would have thought a few years ago that people would live in sewers, and yet that's what they found in New York a few years back. I don't know what he saw down there. I'll tell you one thing. If we could get in there, I sure as hell wouldn't want to go down alone. The aptly named Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster is truly bizarre in that no other such report like it has come in, and it's hard to say what the creature in question could possibly be, especially considering that it allegedly actually spoke. Concerning the witness himself, friends and family said that he was an honest and reliable man, not prone to making up tall tales and the Sun reporters who interviewed him said that he had seemed earnest and honestly scared and reluctant to tell his tale at the town. What did he see down there, if anything? We may never know. One idea of what the Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster could have been was not a tunnel dweller per se, but rather some cryptid from above ground taking refuge or shelter within the tunnel. The region where it was sighted had had long accounts from the natives of a race of smallish hairy humanoids that inhabited areas near waterways and were called the Memeguesi. And perhaps something like this could have found a home down in the tunnel. We will probably never know for sure. As if the Cabbage Town Tunnel Monster wasn't strange enough, then we have what has come to be known as the Octo Squatch. In the summer of 1961, a 29-year-old truck driver named Archimedes Sanchez was driving along a precipitous mountain road through the Basque Mountains in Spain at around 11 p.m., along with an unnamed companion, on their way to the town of Puerto de Barazar. As they rounded a bend, their headlights hit a bizarre and rather monstrous being standing upon an embankment nearby, which prompted the pair to stop their vehicle immediately. When they peered through the murk ahead of them, they claimed that they saw a hairy octopus, which stood around four feet tall with glowing eyes and tentacle-like arms. 
The witnesses and the thing apparently sat there completely frozen and immobile for several minutes. Both parties probably just as startled and scared as the other, before Sanchez snapped out of it and slammed the accelerator, which caused the weird thing to scurry backwards away from the threat, after which Sanchez backed up and tried again, apparently intent on running it over. Interestingly, the otherworldly intruder refused to take off into the night, instead always just managing to avoid being run over, as if it were all a game. Finally, the two men, neither who were willing to step out of their vehicle to investigate, drove off to leave the being behind, never to be seen again. A land-dwelling hairy cephalopod? Maybe. It's another case of we won't know. Our next incident apparently happened near the town of Troy in Bradford County, Pennsylvania, where on the night of November 20th, 2011, a couple was driving along a rural stretch of road called Mud Creek Road, and their attention was caught by what they at first took to be a naked man crawling across the ground in front of them. This might have been considered by most to be already odd enough as it is, but it would get stranger when they stopped the vehicle. The startled couple stopped not far away, and although they could not make out many details in the glare of the headlights just yet, it was becoming apparent that this was no man. At first, they could not tell much other than it was vaguely humanoid in shape, but they got a better look at it when the creature apparently suddenly sprung up into a crouched upright position like a kangaroo. Then it became quite apparent that this was not human at all. What they had seen was roughly humanoid in form, very muscular, standing about five feet high with clawed arms held close to the body, an oversized head reminiscent of that of a wolf, with large black eyes set within it, topped with two bat-like ears, and the whole of its body covered with dull, wrinkly, dark black skin. It then fully stood up and extended its legs to show that it was more like eight feet tall, before lurching forward to fall onto all fours. It was then that the creature whipped its head around and seemed to finally realize that it was being watched for the first time upon which it displayed a look of surprise and panic, as if it had been caught doing something it was not supposed to be doing. It then took a tremendous lead over a high embankment to disappear into the darkened forest. Oddly, the witnesses would make mention of the detail that as it leapt, its legs were only slightly larger than broomsticks, or about the size of a walking crane, and were very long. All in all, they had the impression that they had somehow caught it changing forms, and the man even went as far as to say that he believed that they had witnessed a werewolf in the process of its transformation. What could they have witnessed in the end? Who knows? Adding to all of these bizarre creatures is what can only be described as some sort of vegetable-like humanoids. Certainly one of the more downright bizarre cases comes to us from West Virginia, where in July of 1968, a local man by the name of Jennings Frederick was out bow hunting in the rural backwoods just outside of Fairmont, West Virginia. At some point, he allegedly heard a high-pitched, unearthly sound that he would describe as sounding like a recording running at exaggerated speed. Curious, Jennings searched for the origin of this surreal noise and this was when he would come across a very strange sight indeed. There in the brush stood a seven-foot-tall semi-humanoid entity, with an exceedingly thin, almost skeletal frame, long ears and stalk-like arms that were almost like tendrils, in which ended in slender, seven-inch-long fingertips, tipped with some sort of needles or thorns, as well as suction cups. The whole of the anomalous creature was described as green, and very plant-like in nature, as if it were part animal and part plant. The whole time Frederick watched it, that this incessant chattering sound reverberated around him. He suddenly realized that he could make out words within the alien noise, like glimpses of meaning from white noise. He described it as saying, You need not fear me. I wish to communicate. I come as a friend. We know of you all. I come in peace. I wish medical assistance. I need your help. As Frederick stood there wide-mouthed in the bewilderment, 
The mysterious being purportedly suddenly lashed out with one of its stalk-like arms with blinding speed to wrap him in an iron grip. The needles or thorns on its fingers then apparently pierced the startled man's skin and began to draw blood, but rather than the pain he found himself drawn to the thing's eyes, which seemed to rapidly switch back and forth from red to yellow in a hypnotizing, oscillating cycle that held him in the thrall and dulled his senses. After about two minutes of this, the otherworldly plant monster reportedly let him go and took off in a sprint up a nearby embankment in great 25-foot-long bounds, followed shortly after by a deep thrumming noise that Frederick would later speculate to have been the sound of the creature's spaceship. For years, Frederick kept this undoubtedly absurd-sounding story to himself out of fear of ridicule. But in 1976, he would relate it to the paranormal researcher Gray Barker, who would then include it in his newsletter. The story would be brought to even greater attention when it was mentioned in the late Brad Steiger's 1978 book, Alien Meetings. Was this an alien or some sort of cryptid or what? Whatever it was, the Vegetable Man of West Virginia is certainly one of the more bizarre encounters on record. Similar in some respects, our last report, this time from near Waverly, Kentucky, was from witness Bill Wolfe and his family. The road they were on went straight through a vast expanse of cornfields, and while the swaying stalks would have been eerie enough already, it was when they went up over a low hill that things would get truly bizarre. As they went over the hill, they saw something go crawling or slithering across the road in front of them. It was somewhat humanoid in shape, about seven feet tall, very thin and long, and looked like what they would describe as an anthropomorphic stalk of corn, covered in tufts of what looked like the kind of hair one finds growing on corn stalks. The outlandish beast then crawled its way across the road to disappear into the gloomy cornfield on the other side. What was this bizarre creature? Was this some abomination that just crawled in from some parallel universe to go crawling right back out? Whatever it was, the corn squatch has never been seen since. In all of these cases, there are creatures that just don't seem to be within the realm of classification. And also, they're never seen again. Is this indicative that they would purely be the imaginations of the witnesses, or is there something more to it? Could these strange visitors from some other weird plane of existence briefly bleed into our own reality to vanish forever back into their own? What could really be going on here with all these bizarre accounts? It's hard to say, but reports like this will likely continue to come in for some time to come. Hey everybody, on your way out, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and join us again here on Unknown Territory for another The Unknown Files, coming up soon.